Hi, am I in the air? Hey, what is going down, everybody? And welcome back to another brand new episode of Am I on the Air? My name is Don Mega. I'm your host, and I'm so happy that you're here to join me this week to get caught up with all the latest and the greatest when it comes to entertainment news and television movies, non-spoiler reviews. You come right here to Am I on the Air? It's season 27, episode 2. Tonight's show is titled Time for Another Round. We're going to be breaking down the news from August 23rd through today, August the 30th. That's right. We are broadcasting one day late. We are, ladies and gentlemen. It is a Wednesday. We usually put out new episodes every Tuesday. So I apologize for the 24-hour delayness. But you know, what happened on yesterday, Tuesday, uh, was something pretty cool. Myself and Peeps, and if you've been listening to my show, you know Peeps. Uh, we do a lot of the Am I Still on the Airs together. Uh, we went and we played a little Marvel trivia last night. We put our brains to the test. Um, we, You know, me, Peeps, and Friggins did a Marvel trivia a couple years ago, and we won first place, and it was pretty awesome, and we had a great time. So there was another Marvel trivia coming to town. And we were going to do it as a group again, but Friggins left us. He went out of state. Uh, he had to go do to go to work and do some other stuff. So uh, me and Peeps said, "Fuck it, let's go. Let's just do it and let's see what happens." And uh, so just me and Peeps, just our little two man team, uh, we ended up coming in second place, and we only lost by one damn point. Uh, so a little disheartening, and we blame Friggins for it because if he was there with us, I'm sure we could have got one more point out of him. Uh, but we still feel very proud of ourselves because we were going up against probably about 12 other teams and they were all like four or more people. So the fact that the two of us were able to get second place uh, without any extra help, I thought was pretty damn cool. So we did that last night. And by the time I got home and dealt with the family and everything, I was just super tired and I was just like, I can't do a show tonight, man. I just don't have the energy for it. So I apologize for the delay, but we are back. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't want to delay it any longer. Just one day. So let's do it. We're going to talk two movies, non-spoiler, a TV show real quick. And then, of course, we're going to get caught up with the news of the week. So let's jump on into it. I'm going to start with our big movie of the weekend, which is Gran Turismo. Yes, I finally saw Gran Turismo. I say finally because there was a couple of weekends of preview showings that I just couldn't get to. So I, I did go to the preview night uh, when it was actually released this past weekend to its wide uh, audience. I saw it in IMAX. And you know what? I was looking forward to the movie, but not really sure what I'd get out of it. I thought it would probably be pretty cheesy and kind of just a, a little fun one-time watch. It ended up being a really good movie that I really, really enjoyed. The racing was fantastic. The way it was directed was fantastic. This is directed by Neil Blomkamp, um, who most people will know from District 9. He also did Elysium, and he did Chappie. Uh, so he some hits and misses, but everybody loves District 9, right? Um, so kind of interesting for him to get out of that sci-fi arena and do something like Gran Turismo. And I remember when they first started talking about this movie, I was like, okay, that's an interesting PlayStation product property to adapt right a racing video game i mean i guess right we got a need for speed movie a couple years back which i actually really enjoyed so i said all right i guess we'll see what it does for us but then i come to find out that they were actually taking the approach of adapting this true story a true story about a racer um a kid who a teenager who just loved gran turismo so much played it all the time became such a badass player of the game and then a marketing executive who's played by Orlando Bloom in the movie comes up with the idea to be like, hey, why don't we 
test the best gamers and those we can put through kind of like our own little Gran Turismo university and uh, see if we can turn any of them into real race car drivers. So they put together this tournament. And of course our main character, um, Jan um, wins and uh, who's played by Archie. I'm trying to think about how to pronounce his name. Archie Mataqui. Um, he um, plays Jan, the, the real life character, wins the tournament, goes into the university along with some other players, learns how to drive, right? Because it's an interesting kind of thing. You can't just really go straight from video game to race car driver. You have to condition yourself and you got to, you know, follow the rules and know how to drive the cars, right? And that's where David Harbour comes into play. Uh, he plays a character named Jack Salter, um, who is there to train the kids and make them the best drivers they can. Of course, Jan's parents, played by Ginger Spice and Demon Hansu, uh, are not happy about this, right? They think it's unsafe. They think he should just get a regular job and stop trying to, you know, de- do these crazy things. But he's got to live his dream. And, uh, you know, so he... Ends up going through this thing for Nissan and then becomes an actual race car driver. It's an amazing true story and a fun fact that the real Jan actually plays the stunt double for um, for Archie, which is, I think is super, super cool to have him involved there. Um, the standout for me in this movie was David Harbour. I've always liked David Harbour, but I thought he was incredible in this movie. I just liked his style. I liked his persona. I liked that he was like this gruff dude. Um, but then, you know, also had a really good side to him and he stole the movie for me, you know, out of all the characters. And it was just such an inspiring story. And I was a fun adrenaline fueled ride that I absolutely had a blast with. So I give a big thumbs up to Gran Turismo. Hell of a true story. And I think you should check it out, man. So th- I'd give this one four out of five stars. It was really, really good. My next movie, I was also very, very excited for. And it's Vacation Friends 2. When Vacation Friends, the first movie, dropped. I had no idea about this movie. As much as I do these shows and I talk about movies and TV shows all the time, Vacation Friends flew under the radar. And I think it kind of got tangled a couple years ago in the transition. I think it was a Fox movie that got kind of tangled up with the rights stuff when Disney bought it. And then it ended up going to Hulu, right? A lot of these 20th century Fox movies just ended up on Hulu as Hulu originals. And that's where I think Vacation Friends kind of came from. So I think that's why it kind of just came out of nowhere for everybody. But I loved the first Vacation Friends movie. What a pleasant surprise. Lil Rel Howery, John Cena, uh, Meredith Hager, um, Hagner, um, even Yvonne Orji. Um, just these two couples, right? You got Lil Rel Howery and Yvonne, and then you had John Cena and Meredith. And they were just, you know, wrong place, wrong time. Um, Lil Rel and his, and his girl just trying to have a peaceful vacation and John Cena and Meredith, just crazy ballistic couple that just no inhibitions, cussing, drugs, drinking, get involved and, and somehow they become vacation friends, right? Great movie, super funny, loved it. It was a massive hit for Hulu. So Hulu quickly greenlit a sequel and then The first trailer dropped about a month ago, and I was like, hell yeah, this movie's coming out cool. I'm excited. Watch the trailer. The trailer was okay, but still very excited for the movie, right? We have all our original characters coming back. This time, we got an addition with Steve Buscemi. We got uh, Ronnie Chang popping up in this one. So some cool little new, new, new additions to this movie. And this one here has the newly married couple of Marcus and Emily. Of course, the couple that we talked about, Lil Rel Howery and Yvonne Orji, right? Uh, they invite their uninhibited besties, Ron and Kyla, John Cena and Meredith, uh, for a vacation when Marcus lands an all-expenses-paid trip to the Caribbean resort. When Kyla's incarcerated father, Reese who's played by Steve Buscemi, uh, is released and shows up at the resort unannounced. Things get out of control, upending Marcus's best laid plans and turning the vacation friend's perfect trip into total chaos. 
So this movie takes a lot of what happened in the first movie and tries to crank it up to 10, right? Like people have this kind of bad luck that <laughs> all hell would hit the fan, right? Um, my problem with this movie is it almost goes too far and it's too silly, which sometimes I don't mind. Like I said, I love comedies. I love to laugh. And even if it's a silly ass comedy, I can still really enjoy it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, I'm James Lovino, and I'm here to tell you about Alternate Sides, a movie podcast with a twist. I've worked in the film business for two decades, but I haven't actually seen that many movies. And this has been driving my frequent collaborator, Saab, a self-confessed film snob, crazy. So every week, while he's stuck in his car trying to avoid getting a parking ticket, thanks to New York City's alternate side parking regulations, we discuss a classic film I've finally just gotten around to seeing, Alternate Sides, a new podcast about movies, parking, and a 25-year friendship, wherever you get your podcasts. This one really pushed the button for me um it's got some really good laughs i'm not gonna say it doesn't i think john cena gives it his all meredith hagner always gives it her all lil rao howry is great yvonne orgy was fantastic in this you know steve buscemi does his thing uh carlos santos pops up in this and he's super super funny in this as well too so the characters do what they can and they really do give it their all but the movie doesn't give its all it's just, you can kind of tell that it was supposed to be a one and done kind of film. And then it became that hit on Hulu and Hulu just said, hurry up and give us a sequel. And they just slapped something together for us. And that's this, right? They tried to say what worked in the first movie. Let's just do it. Let's dial it up. And unfortunately it just makes it too extreme for me. It's just too much. It's too over the top and it just lands too hard on the silly most of the time. So there's some laughs to be had here, but overall, especially compared to the first movie, I was really disappointed with vacation friends too. So I would only give this one two out of five stars. It's just okay. At best, um, watch it for the leads and, and see if you can get some laughs out of it. It is on Hulu. So you don't got to spend a bunch of money going to the theater but I don't think you're going to get much else out of it other than two out of five stars. All right. So there's our two movies. And then on the TV side, real quick, I'm just going to say, cause I'm so far behind on this. I finished season one of only murders in the building. I don't know why it took me this long because we started season one, like two years ago when season one dropped and we somehow stopped it like episode seven. Right? It's like of 10 episodes. We somehow stopped around episode seven and then just never got back to it. So since there's the strike and there's not a lot of new shows, I'm catching up on some stuff. So I, I found it in my queue and I said, you know what? We need to finish this show, right? Because season three is actually airing right now on Hulu and I still had to finish season one. So within a couple nights, actually not even a couple nights, I think one night binged episode seven, eight, nine, ten, and it was really, really good, man. And I was just like, why the hell did I come off this show for so long and never found my way back to it? It's a half hour show that really buys its time very well. It's super funny. You know, Steve Martin, um, uh, um, you know. There's so much going for it. It's so funny. And I'm just so disappointed in myself that it took me this long to get back to it. But I finally did wrap up season one, ready to jump into season two. So then by the time I finish season two, hopefully season three will be done and I can just binge that one. So just wanted to shout out Orange is the, or I was going to say Orange is the New Black. Only Murders in the Building. I don't even know why Orange is the New Black would be on my head. Um, but yeah, only murders in the building. It's a Hulu original. Check it out. All right, guys, that's what I got from the review side. Let's talk box office coming in at number 10. It's talk to me. Number nine is the hill. Number eight is a debut. It's Liam Neeson's new thriller retribution did not do very good. Only made three and a half million dollars at number eight. I uh, kind of want to see it, but I heard it's pretty generic, but 
you know what? I kind of dig those generic ass Liam Neeson's movies, right? They got us through COVID. Uh, number seven is Meg Two: The Trench. Number six is Strays. I'm happy to see that even though Strays had kind of a rough debut last week at number five, it only fell to number six this week and only had a forty percent drop, which is really good for a comedy. So hopefully, some word of mouth is getting around and people are going to check out Strays because it is the funniest movie of the year. So support it. Check it out. Coming in number five is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Number four is Oppenheimer. Number three is Blue Beetle, which I'm very sad to see that it dropped from number one to number three just in one week. It did only drop 51%, though, which is pretty good for a comic book movie. Um, Number two is Barbie. Um, So Barbie kind of jumping back up. And then number one, Gran Turismo. We just talked about that. Gran Turismo making about 17 mil. Uh, to be the new number one film of the weekend. So congratulations there. All right, guys. That's our box office. Let's switch gears and get into our news of the week. Uh, we know we this weekend we got Equalizer 3 coming out. And director Anton Fuqua was said he is considering maybe doing a de-aging Denzel Washington for an origin story. That would be very interesting to see if they did the de-aging thing. Um, But a lot of people are saying, you know what, instead of de-aging, why don't you get his son, right? John David Washington, uh, another great actor who could play his father in a younger age. Why not? Because I know Denzel pretty much has said this is his last Equalizer movie, but now we're talking about this prequel. I say hire his son. But yes, Anton Foucault says he has considered doing the de-aging thing for Denzel. So we'll see if that ever ends up going anywhere. Uh, We have the trailer for Flora and Son. This is Joseph Gordon-Levitt's new show that is coming to Apple. Uh, It might actually be a movie. I don't have the official thing in front of me here. Um, But Joseph Gordon-Levitt becomes a guitar teacher in the upcoming Apple TV Plus original Flora and Son. Check out that trailer there. Uh, The Walking Dead spinoff, Daryl Dixon promises a unique spinoff show. He says we're not following anything. They're going to do their own thing, so very cool there. We have the trailer for VHS 85. That's right, another found footage anthology terror. I like the VHS series, but the last couple have not been very good. And this one's going to be an AMC Plus original, uh, which is like what the last movie was. Hopefully, it's a lot better. I hope they get back to the roots on this one, because I did really like VHS. In some more trailer news, we have the Red Band trailer for Expendables 4. What I really loved about this trailer is that it's super cheesy, because it's like the voiceover stuff. Coming soon. Um, But what I loved about it is they really ripped on the fact. Because if you guys remember, Expendables 3 was PG-13. Expendables 1 and 2 were hardcore rated R movies that were very violent, bloody, awesome stuff, right? And then Expendables 3 came out and it was PG-13. A lot of people were pissed about that. So this Expendables 4 trailer kind of pokes fun at it. And it's like, Expendables 4 is rated R. And then it like shows a bunch of heads getting blown off, limbs getting shot off, uh, sexy um, uh, Megan Fox, you know, like stuff like that. And it's like... Get ready for Expendables 4 in Rated R. (laughs) And I was just like, this is the best trailer, like, ever. It was so good. It was so much fun. And I love that they played the cheesiness of it. And that's what you got to do for Expendables, man. Just have fun with it. So check out that trailer if you haven't seen it yet. We also have the trailer for Leo, which is the new Adam Sandler animated movie that's coming to Netflix, where he plays uh, an iguana, I believe. It's It's an animal um, cartoon movies. So very interesting there. We also have the teaser trailer for wilderness. Uh, Jenna Coleman is out for revenge in Amazon primes, new thriller. We have the trailer for the Marsh King's daughter based on the best selling book. Daisy Ridley is leading this one as it gets an October release. Uh, my wife actually just bought the book. She liked the trailer a lot. So she ordered the book just to get, get ready for this one. So, you know, see, it's got its fans. Thomas Brody Sangster steals hearts in Disney Plus's uh, twist on Oliver Twist. That's right. It's called The Artful Dodger, and this is going to be coming soon to Disney Plus. Uh, Zack Snyder promising a Snyder Cut of Rebel Moon. That's right. He says his his uh, Snyder Cut will be an hour longer than the upcoming two-part Netflix movie. So a lot of extra stuff. I love Zack. He's always got extra footage in the can. Give it to us, man. We ready for it. 
Uh, in some bummer news for a lot of people, this was uh, rumored for quite a while, and now it's official. Dune Part 2 has officially been delayed into 2024 due to the writer strikes. It looks like it's going to come out in mid-March now, I think March 15th. Uh, to be exact. So for those of you that were excited for Dune Part 2 in November, you're going to have to wait just a little bit longer till March of 2024. WGA, the Writers Guild, says that the studio's latest offer is still not yet good enough, so the strike is continuing, and that is definitely a bummer. Wolf Like Me is coming back for Season 2 very soon over on Peacock, and Edgar Ramirez has officially joined the cast. This is a show that I really want to watch, because it has Isla Fisher, and it has Josh Gad. I think it looks really, really good, and I just never had a chance to get into it, so it's been on my queue. I'll probably get into it soon, Uh, but, you know, kind of, it always, when I see a season, a new season is coming... I'm always like, damn, I'm way behind, right? If I haven't even started the first season and you already got season two coming out. So yeah, I'll have to get into this. I've heard nothing but good things. So looking forward to that. We have the new full trailer for the morning show season three, um, which looks really good. I love the morning show. This is on Apple TV plus it's going to come back in mid September. So keep an eye out for that. I didn't even realize that director David Ayer wrote the first Fast and Furious movie. Had zero idea. He was uh, being interviewed recently and he says that, you know, um, he feels left behind by the Fast and Furious series. He he co-wrote the first movie. He says it's the biggest franchise in Hollywood and I don't have any of it. I got nothing to show for it. Nothing because of the way business works. So really bummer, man, that you have somebody like a David Ayer who helped get this franchise off the ground and has never been involved in any of the other nine movies. That's a little insane, man. Come on. You got to get David air back for fast X part two, baby. Let's go. Uh, Barbie has generated 575 million at the domestic box office, jumping over the previous record holder of the super Mario brothers, which collected 574. So now Barbie is the highest grossing domestic movie of the year. We have the trailer for Foe, which is Paul Mescal and Shirsha Ronan's new movie. They play a troubled married couple in a Black Mirror S sci fi thriller. That's right. If you watch the new season of Black Mirror and then you watch this trailer, you're like, it feels like somebody's ripping somebody off. Uh, but the movie's set to debut on October 6th. For those of you looking for that one, a new live streamed CNN channel with new shows is set to debut on Max. That's right. So if you have the Max app, uh, CNN is going to have its own hub where you can watch live news, breaking news, uh, different new shows. So very cool there that they're going to incorporate that um, over to Max. So I, I think that's a really, really cool thing. Godzilla vs. Kong gets a pushback just a little bit. Uh, the new movie, Godzilla vs. Kong, The New Empire, has been pushed back about a month. Uh, the movie was supposed to come out mid-March, and that's the release date that they gave Dune 2 over to. So that means Godzilla got pushed back to like mid-April, taking um, another movie slot. I believe it was an animated Lord of the Rings film, which has also been pushed back to December of next year. So everything kind of shifted back a little bit. So, um, so not too much of a delay, which is good because I'm looking really forward to Godzilla vs. Kong. We have the season two trailer for Bosch Legacy. I know a lot of people looking forward to that one. Uh, we have the season three trailer for Kung Fu Panda, the Dragon Knight. So check that out. Um, the Flash is now streaming on Max. We were just talking about Max. That was a really quick turnaround, no pun intended. Um, that yeah, the new Flash movie is already streaming over on Max. Uh, kind of bums me out. I bought this movie the day it came out on digital. And then if I would have just waited like three more weeks, it would have been on max, but it's okay. I wanted it as part of my collection. Anyway, I really like the flash movie. Still don't understand the hate movie is awesome. I've already watched it like two or three times since I bought it on digital. It's a fun movie, man. So I'm going to enjoy it. Doogie Kamehameha MD has officially been canceled over on Disney plus after two seasons. That's a bummer one there, man. I used to watch that show with my daughter. She really liked this show. So sucks to see it canceled after two seasons. Uh, the pass is now streaming over on Peacock. So make sure you check that out. Drew Sedora, uh, is leading this thriller. Um, so check it out over there on Peacock. Our flag means death season two, baby is coming soon to max and the new teaser trailer just dropped. So you can check that out right now. 
Nancy Drew, executive producer, slams the CW after the series cancellation. They quote unquote said they suck. That's right, CW does suck. Uh, so there you go. There. Um, talks between the writers and the studios are once again at a standstill. Quit button heads, guys. We got to move on. Amber Heard thriller In the Fire is going to get a theatrical and digital release in October, which is quite surprising. Um, Jamie Foxx set to play God opposite Mickey Rourke's devil in a new comedy called Not Another Church Movie. So <laughs> love that title. We'll see how that one turns out. Um, let's see here. We talked about that. We talked about that. Magnum P.I.'s M.I.A. Early Seasons have now found their home. That's right. So remember, Magnum P.I. was on uh, CBS. You could also watch it on Paramount+. Plus. Then the show got canceled, and then Peacock, well, NBC and Peacock picked up the new season, season five. But then the first four seasons just disappeared and weren't available anywhere. Well, now Freebie has officially picked them up. So Amazon's Freebie is streaming seasons one through four now on their platform. So there you go. And then season five, part two, will be debuting soon over on NBC and Peacock. Um, the CNN on Max will launch in September, so there you go there, in case you were wondering, sorry I forgot to tell you that earlier, no additional cost, and it will feature 24-7 news right there, so I love that, that is pretty cool there. Um, Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer is barreling towards the $800 million mark um, after earning another 29 mil this weekend, so big, big hit there for Christopher Nolan. The Spiderwick Chronicles series adaptation is not moving forward to Disney+. Plus. Looks like they were going to try to do that, but they have officially scrapped it. Denny Villeneuve revealed that uh, if he does a Dune 3, he will adapt the book Dune Messiah. Uh, third installment would be his last, though, in the sci-fi series. Uh, after that, he says the books become more es- esoteric. Um, so, yeah. So there you go. Dune 3 would be Dune Messiah if he gets to make that one, which it sounds like it will. I think Dune 2 is going to do really, really good. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles closing in over that $100 million mark domestically. It's about at 98 mil right now. So any day now, it should push on over to the $100 million mark. Um, Blue Beetle, like I said... um, has grossed about 50 mil, which is disappointing for a movie that costs more than a hundred million dollars to produce plus millions more in marketing, even though it only dropped 50%, which is pretty good. Still didn't make enough money for them to really, uh, shine a good light on. So that's, that's really unfortunate. Barbie has officially overtaken Harry Potter and the deathly hollows part two as the highest grossing global release in history of Warner brothers. So there you go. So Barbie is now Warner brothers highest grossing movie ever. So congratulations there to Barbie. That is so cool. Who would have ever thunk it that Barbie would be the biggest movie of the year, not only domestically, but globally. And also, uh, for Warner brothers and their whole history of Warner brothers, which is insane. Um, Bob Barker passed away, uh, longtime host of the price is right passed away at 99, man. Um, what a life. I mean, you, you can't really mourn for 99 years old too much. Everybody loved Bob Barker. Everybody loved the price is right. And, uh, definitely sad to see him go, but 99 years old lived a hell of a life. Um, let's see here. Oh, 8.5 million moviegoers went to theaters over National Cinema Day, which was up over 5% from last year. So congratulations there. Of course, uh, they're talking about this past Sunday. It was National Cinema Day where every movie at every movie theater was only 4 bucks. So pretty cool way to kind of spike the movie theaters, um, which it did its thing, man. So very cool there. The Idol over on HBO has officially been canceled after just one season. It will not be back for season two. I know a lot of people hated this show. I actually I did. I really enjoyed The Idol. I don't know what it was about this show, but it was just weird, and I dug it. And uh, I was hoping it would get a second season, but I'm not heartbroken. I know a lot of people say this show was kind of conceived as a one and done, and I, I think that's where we're at, right? So... Um, but yeah, it has been canceled officially over at HBO In a cross streaming promotion. Max subscribers will get a sampler platter of AMC plus programming in September and October for no extra charge. 
I think this is a really cool idea to kind of like I, I'm hearing a lot of rumors that a lot of these streamers are going to start bundling together And this is a good way to kind of test it out, right? Put some AMC Plus stuff on Max So Max subscribers will get stuff like uh, Fear the Walking Dead I think the Daryl Dixon spinoff, stuff like that And no extra charge, so very, very cool there uh, David Ayer, again, talking about Suicide Squad, right? He says Suicide Squad is his biggest heart, a Hollywood heartbreak Hollywood, I tell people, is like watching someone you love get fucked by someone you hate The big one is Suicide Squad That shit broke me That handed me my ass So he still says that he made a dark, soulful movie That got turned into a comedy Because of just, you know, the studios not knowing what to do with it So again, too many cooks in the kitchen And it's a bummer, man So I hope we do get to see that director's cut The air cut of Suicide Squad one day That would be really, really cool Um, we have some set photos, um, for the new family switch movie. Uh, yes, this is kind of a body swap film, but it's a family swap supposedly. And that's the movie. The movie's called family switch. It's a new family comedy starting just starring Jennifer Garner and Ed Helms. So this is going to be coming soon, I believe to Netflix. So we'll keep an eye out for that one there. Uh, Showtime is releasing a new movie called Heist 88 uh, Which is set to debut in September So keep an eye out for that It's Angela Bassett produced a new heist movie called Heist 88 Uh, Definitely be checking that one out Um, Stars Book 3 Raisin Canaan Is going to be debuting over on Stars uh, for Season 3 in December So keep your eyes out for that We're about to get Book 4 Yeah, book four, Ghost Uh, No, not Ghost, sorry, uh, Force The Tommy-led one, that comes back here Uh, Actually, this Friday, it makes its debut Season two over on Stars. So we're going to get that for a couple months And then book three, we'll be back Raising Canaan in December So keep your eyes peeled We have the trailer for Saltburn Which is Barry Keegan's new movie Uh, Rumor has it that uh, Disney is eyeing Boz Lerman To helm the live-action Tangled movie We'll see, we'll see about that I don't know about Baz Luhrmann doing a Disney movie But that's the rumor, right? Terrifier 2 is heading back to theaters With some surprises What could they be doing? Saying some new tricks and treats, right? As it hits theaters again this November Why November? You know, why wouldn't they do October? You know, for Halloween, it's fucking Terrifier Um, But yes, we'll see what happens there We have the new poster and trailer for David Fincher's new Netflix movie, The Killer So make sure you check that out I know a lot of people looking really forward to this one Ridley Scott says that his original director's cut of Napoleon is four and a half hours long And he hopes that someday everybody can watch it Four and a half hours? Get the fuck out of here, dude I don't know, man, I could not sit I don't even think I could sit through a two and a half hour Napoleon movie Let alone... A four and a half hour cut No way Jose I'm out Sorry I'm out The Tourist season one is leaving Max in September And they are choosing to not air season two That's right season two has been filmed It's coming Max said no thanks And then they're even pulling season one Because of lower viewership So that sucks it's the Jamie Dornan Led show looks really good They compared to Jason Bourne But uh, I guess since nobody watched season one, they don't want season two So they're shopping it around to other networks We have the trailer for The Irrational, which is Jesse L. Martin's new fresh spin on Law & Order It's a new NBC procedural, so check that out Transplant season three is coming soon Um, That's right, the Canadian medical drama is set to debut very, very soon Uh, Let's see here, we talked about that, we talked about that Nick Zano and Teen Wolf's Shelly Hennig get wasted and save the world in Netflix's new Obliterated. So keep your eye out for that. It's a new high octane action comedy. Dancing with the Stars Pro, Whitney Carson is not returning for season 32. Uh, even though the box office was down a little bit, they're saying that the uh, family day over here uh, for the $4 tickets actually boosted Blue Beetle and Ninja Turtles. So I like that, man. You know, a lot of families took advantage of the National Cinema Day at 4 bucks. I know I have a very good friend who has four kids. He doesn't go to the movie theater very often. But guess what? He went to the theater on Sunday and watched Blue Beetle with his whole family. So good to see people taking advantage of that. That's what it's for. 
Uh, Jurassic Park is getting an animated Lego special that's coming to Peacock. Killers of the Flower Moon will hit Cineplexes on October 20th with a streaming debut at Apple TV Plus at an undetermined date. This pivots from the previously announced limited rollout that was set for October 6th. So, yeah, so it's going to get a bigger movie theater debut. So a lot of people are very excited about that. Um, let me see here. Lakeith Stanfield headlines The Book of Clarence, which will be a new bi- biblical epic from the Harder They Fall filmmaker James Samuel. Sony is releasing the film in theaters in January of 2024, and you can check out the first teaser trailer on our social media. The Last Voyage of the Demeter has officially hit digital, so you can check that out on VOD right now. The Marvels, supposedly, uh, when this sequel hits, it will have the shortest MCU runtime yet. That's right, this has not been confirmed, but supposedly the movie is only an hour and 45 minutes. So that would be the shortest MCU movie, if it is true. Um, You know, not too bad, man. You know, uh, sometimes movies don't need to be two and a half to three hours long. So if we could tell our story in an hour 45, sounds good to me, right? Let's get in, let's get out. Chris Hemsworth and Pedro Pascal are teaming up to uh, star in a new movie called Crime 101. I absolutely love this pairing right here. They're attached to star in Crime 101, which is a thriller based on the novella by Don Winslow. I love it. Everybody loves Don Winslow's books. Chris Hemsworth and Pedro Pascal, sign me up. I'm on board. We have the trailer for Ordinary Angels, which is Hilary Swank's um, new film. It's a new drama that's based on a true story. So keep an eye out for that. Marvel Studios is releasing a new book called The Official MCU Timeline. They released a trailer for this thing. It looks incredible. They literally document this timeline down to the season, down to the month and the year, like everything, every mention of something, every drop, every nugget is in this book in order. This is insane. I can't wait to read this front to back. The Marvel Cinematic Universe, an official timeline. I believe the book comes out in October. Check out the teaser trailer. It's awesome. Uh, The new David Fincher movie, The Killer, we talked about, stars Michael Fassbender. It will hit select theaters and on Netflix November 10th. It'll hit select theaters in October and then hit Netflix on November 10th. It's going to be really, really good, guys. Very excited. The Flash sees 1.1 million U.S. households tuning in for its debut weekend on Mac, so pretty cool there. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is also now available on VOD, so you can get it over on Vudu. Uh, We just talked about Crime 101, right, with Chris Hemsworth and Pedro Pascal. Amazon Prime and Netflix are now in a bidding war to uh, take this heist film. So uh, very cool there, man. You know, that's crazy that of all the movie studios, it's Prime and Netflix that are trying to win the bidding war. So, hey, I'll take it either way, right? Let's go. Ahsoka brings in 1.2 million household views uh, and had a really nice debut weekend uh, with its first two episodes. I just watched season or episode three today. It's great. I love this show. I really am digging Ahsoka. So very, very cool. Julia season two is coming back to Max. Um which is based on Julia Child. It will debut on Thanksgiving. So there you go there. Um, I didn't even know this show was still a thing. <laughs> uh, let me see. Uh, late night host form a new Strike Force 5 to pay their out-of-work staffs. That's right. Stephen Colbert, Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, John Oliver, and Seth Meyers are all teaming up on a new Strike podcast uh, to pay their out of work late night um, staff members. This is really awesome and a great thing for all these late night hosts to do. I love it. Great job, guys. Um, let me see here. Since its debut, Ahsoka has had over 14 million views. That's right. Disney Plus offered up concrete viewing figures for one of its shows for the first time ever, sharing that Ahsoka has racked up over 14 million views worldwide since its debut on the platform. That is awesome. Big time stuff. We have the first trailer for Ferrari. That's right. This is Michael Mann's new film starring Adam Driver and Penelope Cruz. This will hit theaters exclusively in uh, Christmas time. The Great has been canceled over at Hulu and will not return for season four. So no more after season three. 
Denzel Washington's The Equalizer 3 is projected to earn around 28 to 30 mil this Friday to Sunday and then 33 to 40 mil for the four day Labor Day weekend. So awesome there. No surprise that that would win. Emily Blunt and Chris Evans' new movie Pain Hustlers, which was originally just a Netflix film, will also hit some select theaters on October 20th. And then it will hit Netflix on October 27th. So Netflix has also released its full full, uh, fall 2023 theatrical and streaming release date calendar. Um, They also announced that Wes Anderson's second movie of 2023, The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar, will open in theaters on September 20th and will stream on Netflix September 27th. Netflix has also renewed The Lincoln Lawyer for a third season, which will consist of 10 episodes. And uh, Nev Campbell will not be returning for season three. That's right. So that's a big hit right there, man. A lot of people watch this show for Nev. So sad to see her not come back for season three. Uh, Our Flag Means Death season two will officially hit max on October. And check out the new trailer that just dropped. We also have the trailer for What Happens Later, which stars Meg Ryan and David Duchovny. It's a new rom-com. I was shocked to see the name Meg Ryan. I don't think we've seen her in anything in years. So very cool to see her kind of make her return there. The Black Demon, which was a little shark Meg movie that came out that no one watched. And it quickly went to streaming. It is now streaming on Prime Video. And it actually went to Prime Video's top 10. It was number one on their top 10. And since it's been number one for seven days on the app, a sequel is being discussed. That's right. Uh, Let's not get ahead of yourselves, man. A lot of people watch streaming stuff. They don't go to the theater. Nobody saw The Black Demon. Um, Maybe they'll make it a Prime original with a smaller budget. Who knows? But hey, now that it's on Prime Video, I'll even check it out. I love me a good shark movie. I'll check out Black Demon. I already added it to my queue once I read it was on Prime. So there you go. And lastly... Chad Stahelski given an update about his Highlander movie that he's been talking about for years. He confirms that Henry Cavill is still attached to play Connor McCloud, uh, that he's ready to make the movie. He wants to do something different. He wants to showcase the battle of the immortals um, and then really have maybe even TV spinoffs, all kinds of stuff. So he's got a world um, in his head that he wants to elaborate on, and hopefully they can start making this movie sooner Rather than later So on that note guys That is the end of our show We're hitting right around the 40 minute mark We had an extra day's worth of news So it makes sense right Uh, If you'd like to see any of these trailers Or check any of the full articles out Make sure you check out our Twitter page Our X page uh, Twitter.com slash am I on the air And uh, check all this stuff out Also a lot of the articles and videos Are up on our Insta Or sorry on our Facebook as well Facebook.com slash am I on the air So give us a follow give us a like We'd really appreciate it Amiontheair.com is our official webpage Make sure you subscribe to the podcast Over here on Apple Podcast Or Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora um, Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn uh, Yeah, Google Podcasts Wherever you listen to podcasts Just give us a like, give us a review Subscribe so you don't miss an episode Okay Make sure you also subscribe to us on TikTok and Instagram and threads and uh, YouTube as well. Everything is simply at Am I on the Air. And thank you to our great affiliates at Red Dragons Radio. That's reddragonsradio.com. Follow on Twitter at Red Dragons Radio. And the Pop Culture Pros. Make sure you follow them as well on Twitter at Pop Culture underscore Pros. We thank you very much for always streaming our show on demand. And that'll do it for me on this Wednesday, August the 30th. We'll be back next week, hopefully back at our same original. Original Tuesday, right? Unless anything else crazy pops up. Um, but thank you. And I hope y'all have an amazing week, an amazing Labor Day weekend. And until next time, y'all take care of yourselves and each other. And peace. Red